everybody. I'm the Detroit Federation of Teachers, you which I read. So the Feder Michigan Federation of Teachers, when I first started working, we were working for 5,200 a year. We went on strike my first year. Our pay rates went up to 6,400. So instant pay, but better than that, Detroit was a feudal system when I first started, where the principals were God in the building. Yeah. Having a force Whitmer's of a union steward who could speak for you and make sure that you were being legitimately disciplined, right protected, and, and so forth, was probably even more important than the money. Uh, and I know Detroit at that time, you know, the mountain's gonna I started be teaching gonna be steep, but in 66, was probably... We're going to climb. One of the higher paid so districts in the state. As the attacks on unionism have occurred and attacks on teachers, Detroit's one of the think, most think, difficult districts to work in we'll and it's one of the lower paying we'll districts see. in the state. So the effect of lesson, having effective union leadership and effective teaching, union membership what is what makes we you have a economics. safe so and productive cooking. place to work in. It's an organization that advocates for our profession, that's a voice when um, that's louder than my voice alone. So it allows us to have a collective voice, collective power for our profession, for our students. If it weren't for unions, we wouldn't have a middle class. So I really think unions are a valuable, valuable part to society. They, there's more power in numbers. And it's not putting person against person. It's it's a group effort. I know we're up. I think they're great. I was AFT and MEA, and all I can really say is that uh, support of unions is the only help we have for improving our public education. Uh, strong union creates strong schools, creates strong families, creates what we need for our public education going forward. Once you have the solidarity of the members in the union, then you can tackle issues that are important because you have more people, more voices, um, more hands on deck to, to get the word out about what's important and how issues affect not just individual students, but individuals in the community, um, both in the affluent communities and in the less affluent communities. Solidarity is really important. We have to build our unions back. Um, as an old teacher, I remember what unions were 30 years ago. Um, I see the struggle with getting younger teachers involved in the understanding of how unions create such a strong environment for um, the, to fight against the dismantling of public education, which ultimately affects communities, individuals. So yeah, we have to have our unions in order for us to maintain a strong public education. I feel like there should be a fusion between school boards and administration and management and the educators. I'm here because I support students. I respect educators. I want to fund our schools. I think all of us should have that same um, premise, most definitely. It doesn't matter what we do, we all work for the students. So that's okay. the most important. I'm from Flint, Michigan. I grew up in a union family and I saw the benefit that I had from growing up in a union family. Growing up in Flint, it gets instilled in you. Join a union, join a union. They're important. That solidarity of worker, that solidarity of the workforce, and having a voice as a member of the union, it it's something to to cherish because you do that union can give you a power that you don't have singularly the professional development that was provided to me from the union made me better in my personal job as well as being a representative for my members and so now as a union rep and the president of my local when i meet with a or meet with a college I, I'm not only meeting with the college, I'm meeting with the board, with board members, and I can have a discussion, and they, I, I met with respect. That professional development that the union's given me has made me a, not just a better person, but also a better employee, a better leader, a better role model. I work for Fitzgerald Public Schools. I've taught there for 25 years. Uh, my father taught before me. He was very active in the union, and so I am now an active member of our union. I'm the elementary vice president in Fitzgerald, and I wholeheartedly believe in unions. I don't think we would have the little that we do have if we didn't have our unions fighting for us constantly. Our union in our district has helped stand up for teachers' rights, has helped um, the teachers maintain 
some of their salary during these difficult times. Um, I think without the unions, we would have taken drastic pay cuts. Um, we would not have the little that we still do have in place. The children, the union. The unions protect them on a daily basis. Our teachers are able to stand up for the children and their rights. Without the unions, they would not have the freedom to do so. Um, I know our class sizes would be way very high. Like today, we heard them talk about class sizes of 50 in music classes. Um, I think our unions have maintained a small class size. Even with our unions, the salaries are, are so low for teachers that we work with women who can't afford to support themselves, let alone a family. And that's disheartening. I mean, we have people with master's degrees who have spent years and years getting an education, and now they can't even pay back those loans. And we need our unions in order to feel safe enough to have a voice. One of the things we talk about in the union is that the conditions that our our members are facing, those are the same conditions our students are facing. So if you have a, a bad situation for a member, our students are gonna be in that exact same situation. And so it's not just about improving their conditions of the classrooms, it's the access to resources that those students might have. Um, oftentimes, students are getting things in the school that they're not getting at home, and so, we're doing more, or we're, it seems like we're being asked to provide more for our students than the actual school is themselves, which we're happy to do because we care about what we do and we want our students to have a good educational experience so they have an opportunity to go out and succeed on their own. Um, we also fight for a lot of social justice issues because we, we live in a diverse community and we have students who come from all walks of life and they need to feel like they are safe in the schools, they need to feel like they're safe in their communities and that somebody is there to help them and guide them through those tough points in life. You know, we've all had them for whatever, whatever we are, wherever we're from, we've all had those moments of struggle trying to find our identity or trying to find where we fit in the world and as a union, we strive to for those those policies up, and those um, those Shannon ways to support our community and is, is support our students in that and what they do yeah. and who they want to become. So I'm a counselor here in Lansing Schools, and one of the things that I notice in the state of Michigan in general is the ratio is outrageous for one of the the highest in the nation, uh, with I, being, I think it's one to 700. Um, I'm split between two schools. It's unrealistic for me to be able to meet the needs of all of these students. And I'm hoping that my union can help advocate to create the, the numbers in a better ratio to be able to provide more services for my students. Yeah, so we're out here for the middle class. You know, we're out for out here for the, for not just ourselves, but all the people that work at work at Walmart's, Kroger's, Myers, all the suppliers that supply these parts and are working for twelve, fifteen dollars an hour. So the struggle's real. That's who we're out here for today. We're not only ourselves, but but everyone out there that 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 works hard for a living and and gets that weekly paycheck. This is the line right here. This is where we drew the line. We drew the line against General Motors, but General Motors is backed by Fords and Chrysler's and every other uh, big business out there. They're all they're all looking for the same thing. They're all looking to bust the unions. They're all looking to put us in poverty and give us minimum wage. That's their dream. They want to get richer and they want to keep us poor and they want to keep us down. So you can keep a poor guy down if he's living from paycheck to paycheck. He's got nothing else to do but come to work. So. Well, so here, that's why we're drawing that line today, and that's what this fight's about for the okay. middle class. They want to 
keep us at low wages and the taxpayers uh, bailed them out back at the bankruptcy. Our union bailed them out back then. And they also got a tax break from the country uh, just a few years ago and we didn't see any of that money either. So yeah, we feel it's our time to get our, our share back. And because our wages, when they go up, it also brings up wages for other people. Like uh, one, one GM job in there is like seven pe jobs outside and this community deserves better. We support this community 100% and uh, they're supporting us 100% also. So okay. that's why we're out here. We want job security, affordable health care, uh, a pathway for the temporary employees. This is all about these young people, all about the new people who will be coming into General Motors down the road, giving them a fair shake at a good family wage. That's what it's all about. <laughs> and then you're you're working alongside him, but you're not getting paid the same amount. No, I'm not. So we are limited on our pay, and on top of that, we are only stuck at 32 hours. We are not able to go any higher than 32, uh, not available to pick up overtime. We're just basically stuck in the slum. So they're treating you like a contract worker? Basically, yes. And no <laughs> benefits if they can get away with it? None at all. And GM did make money last year, huh? Yeah, we're, we're not asking for the world. We're just asking that these young people get a fair shot at a good, decent family wage. Yeah, that's all. Which is what, which is what uh, unions have been doing for a long time, I suppose. Well, yep, that's the whole basis of the union: fair treatment, fair pay, or a fair day's work. Uh, you want to say anything about why you're on strike? I'm retired. I'm supporting these guys. I retired out of here in 09. Okay. So I'm just supporting them. Okay. GM's got a lot of money. we got to make sure they give back a little bit. Gotcha. It'd be okay. nice if they gave back a little bit to us retirees. That'd be a real nice yeah. bonus. Okay. All right. And uh, you, how many years do you work here at the plant? 38 plus. 30, you survived 38 years at this 30, plant. I had 46 something with foundry time. Wow. Yep. Okay. Hired in July 71, went out in April of 09. Okay. All right. Okay. And how about you? What about this strike? What does it mean to you? I'm pretty content. I've got my time in. Okay. Uh, I'm going to retire soon, but I'm really here for the guys that have started and uh, the newer hires. They're okay. here and they're getting screwed really bad. Okay. That guy there's a temp for three years. I mean, what company do you stay a temp for three years? That's ridiculous. Yeah. So I'm more for uh, the new hires is why I'm here. I just hope uh, everything goes okay. You know, tell you my concern is, you know, we signed a contract in 2015 with General Motors and the UAW agreed to every part of that contract throughout the whole four years. And in that contract, it stated they were going to put 400 apprentices on and not close any plants. They idled four plants and put about 90 apprentices on nationwide. They didn't meet their agreement at all. So when we have another contract, we want some language and some uh, triggers in there so that they meet up with what they handshake on and agree to. We're, we're, we're all concerned about that. A tenant agree of agreement is one thing, but to get a contract that they live up to is another. Because gotcha. they haven't done that in the past. Okay, so you're trying to hold their feet to the fire. Exactly. Do it, do it, be a man and do what you say you're going to do. Okay. You know, The UAW did everything. They met all their metrics for safety and quality and, and, and uh, production. And we've done everything in our four-year contract. They've met very little of their contract, but we're supposed to sign another one with them. Well, there's a lot of people saying that the UAW took a lot of concessions to save GM. Do you think that's still something people should think about? I, I do. Uh, we, we did take a lot of concessions, and uh, uh, they've, uh, on the top, have been bonused, and, and their pay scales have went up uh, drastically. And we have three- and four-tier temporary workers in our plant right now making a lot less money than the traditional legacy worker and we got to think about those folks too because they're not making a lot less with no health care uh, a lot of people think everybody on this picket line is making thirty dollars an hour and that's just not true uh, there's a lot of people making a lot less and they need to be brought up to a, a living wage uh, it, 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 they're, they're solving their problem as a, as, a t as a temporary worker and we have a permanent problem some of these temporary workers have been in this plant for three, four, and five years. Uh, 
and that's not a temporary problem. They need to be they, they need to be made, made whole and permanent. They're 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 a vital part of GM making all that profit, and we don't treat them as such. And it's time to. So, Nick, why is it that you and the union are taking a stand now to take a strike against General Motors? Well, there's there's many reasons why we're standing against General Motors. You know, uh, 10 years ago, we all took a cut and to help General Motors stay out of bankruptcy. And they just feel like all that's wish-wash, you know. They can do what they want to do now. So we're taking a stand against that. Plus all the temporary employees that have been in our plants for five, six plus years that are making $15 an hour while we're making more than that, doing the same job we're doing, that's that's unfair. And now they're trying to take away our health care. I mean, there's so many different reasons why we're doing what we're doing. Okay. Jacob, how about you? What, what's You were on the picket line today, yep. and you were you're letting people know that the union is, is not going to go along with GM management uh, the way they're treating employees. I just feel like we have to re negotiate every four years, so this is just another negotiation. But they decided they wanted to take from us instead of to give give when they're closing down plants and paying our CEO twenty two million a year. Can't do it both. You can't shut down plants, have temps for long term, take from us and pay your CEO and get uh, record profits over the last five years. It's just been, it's been crazy. Here we are in front of the Flint assembly plant and uh, this is a national strike. Uh, why are you out here? What What's important for you in this, this whole issue that's going on? Well, I think it's, it's unfortunate that we have to strike just because GM wants to take, take, take from us, you know, over the the length of this last contract, they've made over 30, 35 billion dollars, and they want to take from us. It's not enough to, you know, we made a lot of concessions. Myself, I, my pay got cut in half, and I had to work eight years to get to top pay, you know, and uh, I'm here just supporting my brothers and sisters, and really, this isn't just about GM. This is about the whole middle class and, and the way things are going. And uh, the middle class is being depleted slowly, and we got to fight for what we deserve. Yeah. And I can't. It baffles me why anybody who's a middle class American has any problem with what we're trying to do here. I don't understand it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't either. It seems to me that being in Flint, this is the, this is where the middle class started. Absolutely. The first strikes, the middle class started right here in Flint, Michigan. Absolutely. And now here it is, the first strikes were in 1935. Here we are, in 2019, and we're still fighting for the middle class. Absolutely. So, when you think about your future, and you're you're a younger person, there's a lot of older legacy workers and so forth. If if you don't put up this fight, what do you think will happen? General Motors is just going to keep taking from us. You know, they don't they don't give us this pay rate and these benefits out of the goodness of their heart. We had to fight for it. We got to keep fighting for it. Oh, okay. We shouldn't, but we do. We, what year were you hired in at GM? In 2008. 2008. So you came in after 94, so they, you don't have a defined pension. You, I do not. You have a 401k. Yes. Are you a temp worker or full-time? No, I, I'm full-time. Okay. I'm full-time, but I'm not a, what they consider a traditional worker. I'm a tier two okay. worker. So actually I started I started as a temp in 2006. So the, the bankruptcy directly affected me. And uh, it, it was heartbreaking to get my pay cut in half. I had to go get a second job and, and it took a long time to get back to making a, a decent wage and I still don't have a pension and you know it's it's an ongoing uh, fight but I'm I'm willing to stand up for what's right. The union members are not getting the same pay. We gave up everything in order for the company to become profitable. Now that they come out of the recession, they don't want to give no increases in the wages. They have dropped the hourly people's wages. 
there's no pension for the people that are working. If you don't have 10 years, I want that back. I want yeah. all those, everything they took away, we want it back. We want it back the way it used to be, the old way. Yeah. Now, how can you be in the middle class if they take all that away? Well, you're not middle class. You are poor now. That's poor class. Yeah. You got to get help. Most of them can't even buy a house. They have to stay home with their parents. You make 14 to $15 an hour. You can't, you can't even save no money. Yeah. So they're working poor. Right. They the working poor people. They got some of them on food stamps. That's not enough to take care of the families. Yeah. Because they told me they are, uh, the wages are so low. When you got other uh, dependents, you got to have a, a more income besides what General Motors pay for you. And it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. Because you got temps in there now that has three years and some of them more or either less. And they get still temps. That's wrong. You're an American worker. Yes, sir. Right? Yep. And if it wouldn't have been for the union, this auto plant might not be here. Right. And all the cars would be coming from... Mexico. Mexico, China, China. Anywhere. You know, anywhere but America. Because labor cost and uh, price of living and everything just seems to be more in America. And when they can take it south of the border and make it for a lot less and make more money on it, bringing it up here. Well, the other thing is you live in this community, right? Yes, I live 15 minutes north of here. So the money you make goes right back in this community. Oh, yeah. So when Genesee when, County. Genesee County. So if this plan isn't here and you're not working here, the whole community suffers. The whole, yes. That's what happened when they shut down the four or five plants that were here. Um, Buick City. Um, uh, Fisher Body. Fisher Body, all of them. Um, Flint has there. just went downhill since they started taking jobs out of here. And it hasn't gotten any better. We're hoping to keep this and add jobs. Add more jobs. Add more jobs. So uh, the position that the union has taken is you're, they're fighting for American workers? Yes. And they're fighting for you? Yes. And you're fighting for them also? Exactly. Yeah. Do you have family? Yes. Yes, yep. And your family depends on you. Yes. If if you were talking to non-union people who don't understand unions, what one thing would you want them to know? Jacob, first. Um, I'd want them to know that the union has our back with management when they try to do things that are unfair, that um, that doesn't that goes against um, the American way. We don't want to be treated. Bad. We don't want to be treated poorly, um, and we like to have a safe work environment to work in. We want to go home to our families. The union does that for us. They help us keep those standards. Okay. How about you? What do you want people to know about unions? Uh, you know, if it wasn't for unions, we wouldn't have this five-day work schedule that a lot of people are accustomed to. You know, people back in 1934, 35, the sit-down strikers, they sat down and fought for a lot of rights that everybody gets nowadays, not just GM employees, everybody, the entire community, you know, and all the work that goes into our union, it, it comes back, you know, for every one auto employee, it affects seven to eight regular employees. So, you know, for us being on strike, it's not just affecting us, it's affecting the whole community. It's affecting the hundreds of thousands of people. So, Suppliers. yep. You know, a lot of people laid off because we're on strike right now. So, you know, we're just trying to get through it as quick as possible, as prosperous as possible. And it's not like we're a asking for a $20 raise and um, all kinds of stuff. We're asking basically for the same contract we just came out of um, and to hire these temps, these temps that have been there for five years. It's getting crazy to keep a temp. They have no insurance. They have... They do have insurance now. They have no vacation days. They have no sick days. They have no days off. nothing. You know, seven they days have to be a week, here 10, every day. 12 hours a day. They have insurance now because the union picked up their insurance? They have, they have insurance through GM, but their deductibles are so high, it's almost like not having insurance. I mean, they, for a family, it's four grand for a year for a deductible. It's, it's not what they deserve. They've been here a long time. Help GM make a lot of money. Yeah. And it's sad to see them treated less equally as we are. Like, you know, management harps on them a lot more than they do on us because we're seniority employees. So 
it's it's easier for them to go on them saying oh your numbers aren't right this and that so and they feel bad they want to do more because they're not hired in so they feel they're going to get released and that it's hard to watch that day in and day out and that needs to stop so as we look at all these train cars that aren't going anywhere that aren't being filled by trucks uh, this is an indication of what happens when management and union can't have a mutual agreement uh, and when a union strikes it normally has reached a point where they're no longer being considered seriously by management. They've been essentially given the word that no matter what they want, they're not going to get it. Now just keep this in mind. The United Auto Workers made concessions uh, about 10 years ago to General Motors to save the corporation from going bankrupt. General Motors was about to go bankrupt and essentially the company was going to be bought up by Chinese investors. Uh, the Obama administration interceded, uh, the United Auto Workers made huge concessions, and General Motors was saved. Years later, General Motors is a very profitable company. The union workers are feeling as if they did everything they could to save the company. They stopped the company from going out of business. The United Auto Workers, working with management, saved the company, made sure that they didn't go out of business. And now years later, when management and General Motors stockholders are making record profits, they're basically saying, take care of these young workers, make sure that they have a living wage, make sure that they have benefits, make sure that they have some kind of retirement that they can uh, reach in their work lifetime. Give them a living wage, give them something they can support a family on, give the community some income that will help the community to stay solvent and grow. These are the kind of things United Auto Workers are fighting for right now in Flint, Michigan. And so as we look at these train cars that go as far as I, I can see, and they're not being loaded with uh, trucks from the Flint assembly plant, uh, we have a situation here where there is a major disagreement. And part of it comes from not recognizing unions or union workers as having a legitimate share of the decision making uh, when it comes to the organization. So this strike is an example of how unions form together as a group collectively to demand better pay, better benefits, and better working conditions for its members. This strike is going to continue until some kind of a mutual agreement is reached. I'm telling you that unions do stand up for the working class. They do stand up for the working man and they stand up collectively. Fair wages, health care, uh, seniority for the temp workers, and uh, just a better opportunity for everybody. And the union is standing up for people, in, in, and how do you see that from your perspective? Oh, they do a great job of uh, uh, collective bargaining and making sure that we have you know, a, a better chance in life uh, for the middle class.